Hi friends! Welcome to Mong Balingo Story Time with Miss Jer. Miss We are the children librarian the Hopkins Library, Hennepin County now. So once again, I just want to welcome all um, for our bilingual story time today. I know it's been a while, so I'm just really glad that we're able to share books and songs today together. Before I begin, I just have two reminders that I want to share with our adults at home. The first reminder is for our grown-ups at home, to feel free to pause this video at any time to allow some interactions or discussions with your little one. Feel free to pause the video on a book page if you have something you want to point out or if your little one just has something to say. Second um, reminder is to follow along with me. Whatever I do, do it along with me. Um, sing along with me, model after me, uh, because by you doing that, you are creating a more comfortable and safe space for your little one at home to follow along as well. All right, friends, so let's start with our hello song. And our hello friends song have um, American Sign Language incorporated into it. So it's important for us not to touch our face with our fingers, okay? Just so we don't spread germs all around. And I just want to also point out that I'm not wearing a mask right now, and that's because I am in a room all by myself and there's no one else here with me. But it's important to wear your mask if you are surrounded with others and make sure to stay six feet apart to stay, uh, to stay safe, okay friends? All right, so the first sign is hello. And to sign hello, I want you to take your hand and bring it to your forehead, close to your forehead. And just like a salute, you're going to bring it out. Hello, good. The second sign is friends. And to sign friends, I want you to take your two fingers and can you make them hug just like how friends do? Yeah. And then the next sign is time. And to sign time, we're going to pretend that we're wearing a watch on our wrist and we're going to point to it, just like that. Time. The last one is to say. And to do that, take your, way, um, your pointy finger, point to your chin, and bring it out. To say. All right, friends. So it looks like we're ready. We're going to sing the first song in English and then we'll sing it the second time in Hmong. Okay? Here we go. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Now we're going to sing it in Hmong this time. Do you know how do we say hello in Hmong? Nyo Zhong. Nyo Zhong. What about friends? How do we say friends in Hmong? Pong Yu. Pong Yu. Okay. Time is she he, she he, and to say to talk is hi, hi. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Nyo jong pong yu, nyo jong pong yu. Nyo jong pong yu. So lu shi he be hai. Nyo jong. Good job! Can I have you give yourself a pat on the back for singing both the song in English and Hmong? And if you didn't sing with me this time, it's okay. You can sing with me again next time. 
All right, friends, it looks like we're ready for our first story, or actually our only story of the day. And the story that I have picked up for us, the title is called A Map Into the World by Kao Kalia Ying, illustrated by Seo Kim. And first, before I begin reading, um, I just want you to take a look at the cover. What do you see on this cover? Who do you see? And what do you think she is doing? One day, you will learn to 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 Alright friends, so I will be reading this story out loud in English uh, because it's written in English um, but there are some long terms in here um, that I will be sharing with all of you. Okay, let's find out what the book is all about. Here we go. A Map into the World by Kao Kalia Ying, illustrated by Seo Kim. And this book is being read with permission of Learner Publishing Group. Here is a picture of a Ban Dao, which is known as a Hmong story cloth. Ban Dao is a traditional needlework technique used on items such as story cloths, just like this one, which visually represents and document the experiences of the Hmong people across time including families' journeys as refugees. The word Bandao is also a girl's name. What do you see in this Bandao? What are the people doing? And before I begin reading, when you hear the word Tai Tai, the word Tai Tai refers to the maternal grandmother which is the mother's mom. The first time we saw the swing and the slide in the garden of the greenhouse with the big windows, my mother sat down in a chair in the backyard and said she did not want to get up. The Thai and I looked at the garden and she pointed out tomatoes, green beans, and a watermelon round as my mother's belly. The thigh knelt down to touch the dirt. I asked my mother if I could try the swing, and she said, Yes, Pandao. Can you point to the Thai Thai? Who in this picture is Thai Thai? The green house became our house. I helped the Thai hang the special story cloth about how the Hmong got to America on the empty wall by the big window of the living room. We saw an old man and woman through the window. They waved, we waved back. Later, my mother and father brought me across the street. The old man's name was Bob, and the old woman's name was Ruth. Up close, I could see that they were even older than that thai. The Thai and I were in the garden picking tomatoes and beans and checking on the watermelon when my parents brought my baby brothers home from the hospital. I ran to the gate. The boys were smaller than my baby dolls, but cuter than any doll with their fuzzy heads and red lips and round brown eyes. Some days the babies cried very loud. I covered my ears with my hands and asked my father to take me outside. Bob and Ruth sat on their special bench. We waved back and forth. The leaves of the two ginkgo trees by Bob and Ruth's house turned yellow like apricots. One day a brisk wind blew and the fan-shaped leaves came flying down. They covered the grass and the street and the dark mouth of the drain. Bob raked while Ruth sat and watched. 
I brought in a leaf for the babies to touch, but my mother said, They're still too little, Pandal. The snow made the world quiet around us. We stopped seeing Bob and Ruth outside. The snowflakes fell on their driveway and glitter glittered in the gray light. I made a ball of snow for my brothers, but it melted before they woke up from their nap. At night, I looked out our big window at Bob and Ruth's house to see their lights shining across the dark street. Sometimes I saw a shape of a person looking back at me. I waved, but the shadow person never waved back. On a cold morning, cars came to our block, filling the street. Car doors slammed as men and women in thick jackets walked quickly to Bob and Ruth's house. My father said, Ruth has died. Her family is coming to say goodbye. I felt sad for Ruth. My brothers just played with the toys above them. The cars kept coming and going the next day and the next. I swayed back and forth on my toes by the big window. I tried to lift one of my brothers so that people could see how cute he was. But he cried, and my mother said, You're still too little to carry him, Bandal. After the Hmong New Year, my baby brothers learned how to sit on their own, and we all sat looking out the window together. I clapped for them when a plane flew across the high skies. They laughed every time. The house across the street looked empty. The ginkgo trees reached for the sky with their thin fingers. When the snow started melting, I could not wait to return to the swing and the slide and the garden. My baby brothers crawled all over the floor, underneath the table, and chairs. They were like puppies, their tongues licking everything. I found the first warm spring on the sidewalk and named her Annette. I wanted to bring her inside so my brothers could watch her wiggle, but my mother said, I don't think so, Pandal. What else do you see on this picture? I see a snail. Can you point to it? The world became green again. And finally, we all went outside. The Thai planted green onions. I picked flowers from the lilac bushes for my brothers to smell. They opened their mouths and tried to eat them. My mother said, Don't let them eat the flowers, Bandao. We took the babies outside again the next day after lunch. Bob's garage door opened, and we all watched as he pushed out his special bench. He sat down alone. I pulled on my mother's sleeve until she looked at me. I whispered an idea in her ear. My mother and I crossed the street and walked over to Bob. I let the sidewalk chalk, chalk bucket swing in my hands. I asked my mother to ask Bob if I could draw on his driveway. I said, if he doesn't like it, the rain will come and wash it away. Bob nodded and said, go ahead. What color of, of what color chalk do you see in her bucket? I see red chalks. I see yellow chalks. What, el what other colors do you see? My mother and Bob talked in low voices. I could hear Bob say, Ruth, she was with me for sixty years. I started my picture with a teardrop, and I made it splatter like sunshine. I drew lines leading away from the splattered sun in many directions. I drew a line that led to the garden. There. I put a yellow 
ginkgo leaf. I drew a line that led to the grass. There I made the sparkling snow. I drew a line to the sidewalk. There I put a smiling worm named Annette. I drew an arrow to our house. There I added lilac flowers. And then I drew a line, the biggest line of all, tore the street, and there I drew the whole world. When I was done, I walked quietly to my mother and to Bob. They stopped talking, and Bob shook my hand. What did you draw for me? he asked. I said in a whisper, A map into the world, just in case you need it. And Bob said, I think I might. The end. All right, friends, welcome back. That was such a beautiful story by Miss Kaukuiya Ying. Um, now that we finished the story together, I just have one question that I want to ask you about it, and I want you to think about it and then share it with your grown up or your adult, okay? So, this book is about Bandao and her family who have a good relationship with their neighbors, Bob and Ruth, right? And even after Bob's wife, Ruth, had passed away, Bandao and her mom and grandma and family, they went over to, to visit Bob outside his house. And Bandao had offered to draw um, a map into the world, a picture on the sidewalk for Bob with chalks, correct? Yeah, so my question for you is, like Bandao, do you know who your neighbors are? Who are your neighbors? And what have you done, or what have you and your family done in the past or recently to show your neighbors that you care about them? And if you haven't, it's okay. Um, discuss and talk with your grown-up what can you and your family do in the future to get to know your neighbors and to show them and express um, that care for them? Okay. Being um, pumbanapana,古文龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙龙
a map into my world that I want to share with all of you. So just like the map into the world that Fan Dao drew for her neighbor Bob, I drew a map into my world. And just to quickly point some things out, you can see me in the far left. And that's me holding a book because I enjoy being a librarian. I enjoy working with the community and helping friends and families. And then next to me, I drew my husband because he is my favorite human in this world. And then next to my husband, I drew a house. And this is because my husband, we recently bought our first home. And I, I'm just so excited with all these new home projects and with all these different um, colors that I get to paint my rooms with. Um, and then next to my house, I drew two tall trees. And if you can't tell, those are birds that's flying above the tree. And I drew this because every morning when I wake up, I hear the birds chirping and with the big bright sun um, shining um, right through my window. And it's just such a beautiful thing to wake up to. At the very bottom, I drew many, many stick figures. And these stick figures represent um, my family and my husband's family. We both have very big families and it's so much fun uh, just to have such big families. There's so much going on and there's never a time that you're alone or bored. There's always something to do and there's just such a big part of my life and my world. Um, and then if you look at my house, you notice, you notice a little caption box, a comment box, and it says, woof, woof. What kind of pet goes woof, woof? Can you guess? Dogs, yes. So I have two dogs. I have a Pomeranian named Moon, and then I have a Yorkie, um, a Shih Tzu Yorkie um, named Teddy, and he looks just like a teddy bear. And um, they're a part of my world too, because it's so good to go home to them and they make me feel very safe at home. So yes, friends, there it is. That's a map into my world. Thanks for listening and thank you for allowing me to share uh, my map with all of you. Now, my activity for you is to create something similar to what I did here and to what Fan Dao did in the book. I want you to create your own map, a map into your own world. Before starting, um, I want you to first think about what's important to you. What makes you happy? And then second, go ahead and grab a paper and a pencil, markers, crayons, what your adult have for you, available for you, and then go ahead and draw that and color it in and whatever you would like to do. And if you don't feel like drawing, you could just write it in in words. And then the third step is I want you to take your map and I want you to share that with your grown up or a friend or a brother or a sister, someone that you can trust. Share your map with someone. All right, folks, that's all I have for all of us. And actually, if you want to, feel free to take a picture of your map and comment it under this video. I would love to see it too. All right, friends, it is time to say goodbye. So just like our Hello Friends song, instead we're going to say goodbye, friends, okay? Just like before, we're going to sing the first verse um, in English and the second time in Hmong. Okay, here we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Shiji
Alright friends, it was so much fun and I can't wait to see all of you next time. Alright, bye!